What's up guys? Welcome back to Skip's Guns. What I have here is three Springfield Prodigies. They are all the four and a quarter inch setup, but I wanted to go over a couple of things to show you guys some of the differences and what will actually help when you go with SGZ. So first things first, this is the OEM version. We haven't touched it. Uh, you can see it's pretty hard to pull back. The trigger is not bad, but it's definitely not good. This is going to give you a lot of issues down the road. I have seen that the four and a quarter inch tends to run a lot better than the five inch. One big thing about that is a five inch slide and a nine millimeter in a 1911 platform. It's just a lot of mass to reciprocate back and forth. So that's why companies like Atlas and Staccato go with the uh, 4, 4.4, 4.6 inch slides. The 4.6 seems to be perfect. That's where you get the Atlas Hyperion and the Athena. Uh, they really are just the perfect size to be able to reciprocate, rise up, come back and stop right exactly where you need it. So couple of things and I'm going to try to talk quick to get all this in here. Thumb safeties, they pretty much are not terrible but a lot of them have been loose when you push them down. They still wiggle. They have really no pad for your thumb. I thought bending here at the tip would be cool but it's it is it is what it is. They are blended nice. The slide to frame fit is great. Uh, the barrels, some of the 5-inch ones need a little bit of work here and there. Uh, but otherwise, it's a very nice gun. Some things that need to be changed, the internals, the mainspring, and the recoil spring are huge. And then the trigger while you're at it. So, here is an example. This is obviously the same gun. You can see here, it reciprocates a hell of a lot easier. Um... What you can do is you throw in an EGW buffer and then a little bit lighter recoil spring. Sometimes they're supposed to come with like a nine pound. You could go to a seven or I run around an eight, seems to be the happy medium. It's really gonna help a lot. And then when you replace the uh, mainspring, that's also going to help because the mainspring is what the hammer and the strut actually push down on. So this spring is in here like so. And then when the hammer pulls back, a strut is connected to the hammer, goes down, and then pushes that spring down. And then when you pull the trigger and the hammer goes boom, that spring is what's pushing the hammer up to then hit the primer. Well, hit the firing pin, the firing pin hits the round, and then the round shoots out of the bullet. Pretty simple, huh? So a couple of things are Atlas triggers. They're going to help when you swap out the MIM internals for EGW internals or um, staccato internals. Both are great. EGW is a perfectly matched setup, but let's say you have a staccato and a prodigy and you put EGW internals in your staccato, might as well save a couple bucks and take those um, staccato parts send them with your prodigy and we can put all that in and tune it up and i mean from there you're gonna have yourself a great little gun everybody compares these things to staccatos they're not far off but they are not a staccato that's exactly that's exactly what i'm going to say um some other things that you can do is fit a trigger that's going to perfectly fit your hand this is a medium trigger, this is a small trigger, and then obviously they have a large. How you decide what size you need is this crease in your trigger finger, you're going to measure that. So here I'm around like two and three quarters, and that will fall into the category of a small trigger. I believe anything over like three, maybe three and a quarter inch trigger, that's when you're gonna to wanna to step it up to the medium, and then there is another category to push you over to the large, in case you're like Shaquille O'Neal or something. Uh, other than that, another upgrade is that you want to go with a uh, newer thumb stop, or slide release, I'm sorry. Uh, these are sunk into the frame, 
it's not bad, but there is an extended one that isn't like a gas pedal. It's more just an extended piece. It's like a triangle. It will hang out. You can see it in other videos. Great thing. You don't have to go, you know, really bear down on it to try to get it to unlock. It's simply right there. You can even hit it with your support hand. Uh, then we'll talk about grip sa or thumb safeties. So on the OEM ones, look at how weak these are. They're super small, hard to get a grip on them. And, you know, just overall, nothing wrong with them, but there's always room for improvement. You have a set of shielded thumb safeties. And in comparison, look at how much wider that paddle is. It's a little bit longer. Even on the other side, in case you need to use your weak hand because you're injured or something. And then you get the shield. The shield is going to protect you from the slide reciprocating. Uh, from there, those are great. But my personal favorite is going to be the Atlas High Ride Thumb Safeties. Now, they do come in a shielded version or this version. You can see that this is wide. And on this side, it's still good. Um... These actually are angled in a different spot where look at how my thumb is sitting when I'm sitting in the shoot position. This is in the safe position. And now when you're down, it puts you way in line with the bore of the gun, giving this area a higher purchase on the firearm, giving you just overall more control of the gun itself. When you compare it to the OEM version, it's not the worst, but... You can see my hand is definitely higher up on the gun and you know that's going to give you just overall more control and then we come down to one of the final things that's going to be magazines you're going to want to either go with an atlas mag or a staccato mag if you want to keep these mags i highly suggest you can try getting uh, some better followers, Springer Precision, you can see if Atlas or uh, Staccato will sell you them. I'm pretty sure Atlas definitely will give you those. Um, and then you might want to go over the feed ramps, uh, little lips here, see if there's any burrs or anything like that. You can polish them away, hit them with a file, buff it all out. Um, that's really a lot of the main components that you need to take care of and you have tons of options too there's dawson precision has uh regular staccato thumb safeties that will help tremendously they are just a better off material egw like i said is just perfect um and then just reducing the spring weights and everything a lot of people are over springing these putting 12 pound recoil springs in way too much guys stop that just enough these guns are not bad. They don't need a 12 pound recoil spring. I mean, the slide to frame fit, this one is untouched and this one's a little bit tighter. They definitely all, this has a little bit more wiggle. You can see the difference in these guns. This one has a slight movement, but they are all within a great tolerance. They're all really accurate. The four and a quarter inch seems to be the better, more reliable gun, especially, I mean, either version, once you pair them up with these couple of upgrades, you're great. The guns are going to run and run and run, and they're going to work for a long time. I'm not going to be breaking the bank. Everybody who comments saying, oh, well, you know, you're going to put that much money into it. You might as well just get a staccato. You're still going to be under the price of the staccato with doing simple little things like this now if you don't know how to do this stuff yourself obviously there are different people that can help you out with that um as i've always said you can look in descriptions of videos you can find people that know how to do it uh there's always someone out there in the world that can help you and watching videos like this and getting a good idea and understanding of how things work and what's actually out there to fix these problems, that's exactly what YouTube's all about. So, I don't know. This wasn't a really well thought out video. I kind of just wanted to go over some things with you guys about these prodigies since they are super popular. So, I hope you guys learned something. Please like, subscribe, share, 
tell everybody about Skip's Guns. Um, if you guys are interested, check out some of the upcoming videos. They're going to be some bangers. We are going to be shooting a bunch of these uh, with a lot of the afters. We don't need to really see the befores because we know what the before is. So I like doing the after videos and showing you what these actually come out like. This has a Dawson Precision Magwell. This is a question I keep getting asked, so I'm just going to toss it out there. Needs to be fit, but once it's on there, it is nice. And it will work with the, uh, uh, whatever the hell these things are called, the Prodigy Mags. Um, if you move on to another one, obviously this is the Atlas one. This is a, a 126 millimeter, so it'll work with that. Same thing here. Works with all of them. You just, like I said, need to fit it. Don't cram it on there, whatever you do, guys. None of this stuff is just going to pop on. You need to fit everything when it comes to a 1911 and 2011. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. There's always someone else out there that knows how to do it. And make sure that that person knows how to do it as well. So a lot of people say they know how to do it, but they don't. So other than that, though, guys, please stay safe. Remember, believe and achieve, and we'll check you later.